Hey, what's up, you guys? It's Nicholas Lionrider. Uh, it's been a little bit since uh, our last Roger Williams episode. I'm joined here today with uh, Dill. Uh, he's been in... Uh, what episode were you in? I was in the talking episode. Talking episode, yeah. So uh, this is the uh, the last episode in our Adventures of the Marco Polo Trail. Um, now, uh, I should probably address why there's been such a delay. Uh, since the Australia update, um, as many people know, the uh, all mods broke and stuff, and so all of my big series like Mystic and Roger Williams and stuff had to be delayed for a bit. Um, but uh, I'm back now, so uh, I uh, am making this episode with kind of sad news because <laughs> um, the the Zeus local camel died recently, like literally like last week. And I, to to my knowledge, they still haven't actually posted about it on Facebook or anything, like or like Twitter or anything of that nature. Um, the only reason I know about it is because my girlfriend and I went to the zoo, and there was a sign outside of the exhibit saying that Sasha had died, like literally that morning. So, which is weird because, um, in my experience and from what I've seen, zoos usually will announce when an animal dies within the first like day or two but yeah that was the odd th well yeah. they did it with the first camel like they think that was the odd part is they did it with gina who was the old dromedary camel um uh because we had two and she died like about maybe a year and a half ago two years ago um and they did make a big announcement out of it so i was just really surprised about that that they um didn't say anything but uh so this video, I've, like, I feel bad because I know I've been talking about, oh, I need to get the Dromedary Camel episode out, you know, th th for months now. And like, it just, yeah, by the time I finally was able to, because the update came out, the camel just drops dead. <laughs> it's like horrible. <laughs> um, so now this episode is just kind of like in commemoration of her. Cause I'm, I'm still going to make like a, you know, I'm still going to do the episode like, you know, cause why not but um i no longer am probably going to release the mod just because you know it, it was a pain to update and there still were issues but uh i mean i guess i could just start talking about the actual episode so i don't know if when the last time you went to the zoo dill but like um, um it's been it's been a bit it's been like two years yeah, but uh, yeah. outside the camel exhibit, they have uh, this little uh, camel statue. It's weirdly a Bactrian camel, um, even though they had dromedaries. So I just quickly made a, um, a little like statue. Uh, I was thinking about, oh, should I mod this in? But I'm like, nah, I could just build it out of like custom pieces. Um, so it's a little uh, Bactrian camel statue. Um, it's just like kind of laying on its side and stuff. And um, so this episode, I'm going to be doing not only the camel episode, but the entire uh, Venetian Plaza, which I, I know, yeah. I know, Dill loves so very much. Oh yeah, I love it so much. It it totally shouldn't be replaced with an exhibit. No, it's 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 amazing. Yeah, you know? yeah. Because um, uh, for those who don't know, the Venetian Plaza is basically one of the areas where they host like parties and stuff. Um, before Corona, of course. Um, and they would hold parties here, and, like, uh, it was, like, a thing that they would have kind of, like, reserved off and stuff. And it was kind of the thing that, like, was closest to resembling the actual, like, Marco Polo theme. Because uh, the actual plaza is based off of Venice, Italy. Um, so it's got, like, uh, little, like, mosaics of, um, you know, like, uh, old, like, Renaissance, you know, style architecture and stuff. And then... Um, on the end of it is what I'm building right now is uh, supposed to be Marco Polo's ship, um, and so it's it's not anything crazy. It's basically just like a room with like two two little uh, other extension areas, and there's some like boat parts and stuff, but it's nothing very sophisticated at all. It's just wood. My mother, when I was growing up, used to say it was like the world's greatest like uh, like fort for like kids. Because it was just like basically like a treehouse type thing. <laughs> um, and then now I'm just building the actual Venetian Plaza itself. Um... <laughs> Every time I just look at it, it's just, I just get this feeling of like disgust. Like, honestly, 
an exhibit can go here, but they just choose not to. Yeah, objectively, like, it is, like, kind of, like, I, I will say it's probably a waste of space. I understand why it's there, because for those who don't know, it's, it's secretly there to just hide the, uh, interior building of the snow leopards and moon bears. Um, so, like, as you can see, it's literally, like, right next to the moon bear wall, like, the rock wall. Um, but, like, what I just find funny is, like, I, I feel like they didn't need to even hide the building, really. Like, the elephant house, for instance, like, they didn't try to make it, like, oh, no, it's secretly an African, you know, savanna. Like, it's... it's big gray blob. Yeah, it, it's, it's a building, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, we, you can hide it with some foliage and stuff, but I agree with, like, what Dill's saying, because it's literally, like, a big area. Um... Roughly the size of the moon bear enclosure. Um, maybe not the moon bear enclosure, but definitely like it could hold like probably like an ungulate or something, like as far as size wise. But um, I understand why like they probably won't take it down and stuff now just because like, you know, it's been there so long. And, Unfortunately. And again, they use it for um, housing or uh, like hosting parties and stuff. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it's fine for what it is. You haven't been able to go in it, uh, inside of it, like, general public-wise since last, maybe, like, last year. Because um, I remember even before Corona happened, uh, when I went on my visit during the winter, uh, maybe around February, when this series basically started, um, it, I, it was even unavailable then, so... Luckily, there's enough, like, reference images online on Zoo Chat and stuff that, like, you know... And I've been here enough that, I, like, I know the general layout. It's not really that complicated. Um, it's basically just kind of like a, you know... It's actually kind of like a Moroccan market on the outside, and then, like, Italian architecture on the inside. Um, so when yeah. I was little, um, I always thought there were fish in the little... Um, like water part between the like Venetian mosaic house things and the path. Yep. Yeah, but I don't. No, it's basically just a wishing well. <laughs> like I thought that for like years and years and years, I thought there were fish in there, but apparently not. Nope. Never. Yeah, it's always just been literally um, like yeah, people just toss coins yeah. in there, and then like you know, so so yeah, people just treated it like a wishing well, and I think that was just because. I don't know, I feel like that's a common thing. Whenever people see water of any kind, they just want to throw coins in it. <laughs> yeah. Like, I feel like that's a common thing. Like, I, I know at, um, like, casinos and stuff, people do the same thing, and, like, a fountain. They're just like, oh, yeah, it's a fountain. Yep, third time to throw water in it. <laughs> or, uh, coins in it. Like, um, and then I'm doing the kind of, like, again, it's sort of like Morocco market architecture mm -hmm. on the outside, which I think was, like, meant to be in line with the, the camel theme. You know, uh, how it goes from, like, you know, Moroccan to, like, uh, like Eastern Asian. And I was trying to find uh, the closest piece I could. They have a little circular um, piece on these uh, walls that are uh, hollow on the inside. So it's a white ring, but that's it. Uh, closest thing I could find was the East Asian uh, little piece. Uh, so ignore the middle bit, <laughs> the, the middle design. It, um, in real life, it's not that intricate, but, um, it's close enough. Um, so a pain with this episode, other than that stupid peacock, which, you know, it's just in the way. Peacock, yeah. It doesn't belong <laughs> there. Um, <laughs> besides that, uh, an issue with this episode was I had to relocate the, uh, paths for the, uh, snow leopard and moon bear, um, drop-off areas. Mm -hmm. Uh, to now accommodate for like this interior building so uh, and the other thing is like the interior building uh, for the most part is not visible from either of the um, exhibits so I had to hide it the best I can from one side and it's a weird shaped building so towards the end of the episode you see me messing around with that and it was just a pain but um I think for now, I basically, uh, you know, I, it, that was me kind of wrapping up the Venetian Plaza the best I can. Um, and then now I'm working on the sign to the Marco Polo area, um, which uh, I think I did a pretty good job with it, um, all things considered. It's not like 100% accurate. Um, 
it, just because the signs in the game don't give me many options, uh, it basically said uh, says Marco Polo's Adventure Trail, the Marco Polo being a, in a different size font. Um, and there's just no signs in the game that are just able to just be blank text. So I had to like kind of mess with it the best I can. Because uh, the other thing is the, the sign has some mountains on it, like uh, blue and white mountains. Um, so... I was able to do like a little, you know, version of it, and I think it looks okay. Um, it's just not, you know, anything perfect, yeah. of course. I think it looks good. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like, yeah, it's definitely like presentable. You can definitely tell like what it's supposed to be. Um, and then I'm just adding like some foliage and that sort of thing. Um, and yeah, I mean, that's pretty much that. Um, like again now i'm just adding more foliage around the sides of the building uh and then yeah finally we're getting to uh the actual camel enclosure um which isn't very you know difficult like it was it, believe it or not the camel enclosure was just a sand pit <laughs> um, no really i know i know i know we've had some great sand pits for things like the zebras and bison and stuff but you know like, would you have even thought that maybe the camel exhibit might also just be a sand pit no never 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 in a million years i, I would never think that but there is a uh there was a little like rock um trench to keep the camel from escaping so uh i thought this would be a good time to like kind of uh mix and match some color options for the rocks to kind of you know make it a little more interesting looking <laughs> Uh, I've been I've I've been liking this like method I've been doing with a lot of builds where I just take a bunch of color rocks and just kind of combine them because it kind of makes it look like you know a lot more interesting than it should be. There's like some variety there. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Uh, and then just to add a little bit of visual intrigue, I added a little bit of soil on top of the uh, the sand, and uh, the, there are some trees uh, in on the outskirts of the exhibit and that sort of thing. So I did include those as well. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's not too much to say about this, um, but what I am curious, now that Sasha has passed away, the zoo's plan was always to add tigers, so I am interested in that, and so I am curious if that's going to be a thing that they're planning now, or... I mean, I think that, I don't think that they're going to replace anything in this exhibit. I think they're just going to go for the tigers and build the exhibit. But the thing is, um, with the current pandemic that's going on in, um, in the U.S. and around the world, is that's kind of stopped uh, everything. Zoos getting animals and zoos renovating things. Like, for example, where I work, we were supposed to get a female red panda, but COVID just fully stopped that from happening. So I... I do think that they are just going to go ahead and get the tiger, but I don't think it's going to be for another, I'd say maybe um, a year or two till they start construction, maybe. I don't know how construction's been going on during COVID because I don't really work with that, but I know getting animals is really tough at this point. Yeah, exactly. Like, I'm not sure about that myself. Um... And I don't even know what tigers were supposed to get. I do want to comment on this because people are probably like, what is this? Uh, it's supposed to be an abstract pangolin statue because for some reason the zoo has one of these on the trail. It's like an art edition. Like, I, I don't know why because we don't have pangolins at the zoo, but that's what it's supposed to be. And again, it, it, it probably looks like, ew, that's disgusting. It doesn't look like a pangolin. Yeah, I know. It doesn't look like a pangolin in real life either. Um... <laughs> But, um, yeah, I don't know, like, what, what what would you, you know, the, like, tiger, you know, specifics on AZA and stuff. What do you guys, like, what do you think they would get? Like, Siberian um, or... So, the, I think the Malayan. most common subspecies in, um, U.S. zoos, I'm pretty sure is Siberian or Amur, whatever you want to call it. Yep. Um, but I, I personally think that they'd probably get that. And a lot of these animals are colder weather asian animals yeah so i think it would just make sense if they got uh siberian but you never know they could go for the malayan or the sumatran but i feel like it'd be a lot easier to source the siberians yeah i definitely yeah. think so too um and again that's gonna basically cover the entire like uh 
left side of the moon bear enclosure. So it's going to start in the camel enclosure and then go all the way down alongside the moon bears, uh, down towards like that smoking area slash uh, uh, quiet area. Um, and so that it's going to be a big exhibit um, when they get around to it. So that's why, like, I agree. I don't know if we're going to see it for a few years because it's going to be a large construction process. Um, so. Uh, just kind of rounding out like towards the end of this video the last like I don't know like five ten minutes um, I go back to the Venetian Plaza uh, to do all the detailing um, just because I wanted to make it accurate and um, it's not totally accurate obviously like uh, a thing I wish the game had that they don't is they don't have any signs of like people um, like so they have like a bunch of animal signs and stuff, but they don't have any like people. So like I wasn't able to like do anything with that. Um, one sign that I did try to do is uh, I, I don't know if any of you know about Italian culture, but uh, the Venetian in, in Venice, uh, their like kind of like emblem is a uh, lion with uh, wings. Um, that's like com it's common throughout Venice and stuff. Um, and so they actually have that like kind of up top here. And so, um, I had to make it a little bigger than it normally is, of course, but, uh, I was able to, like, just kind of use some of the sign pieces of the lion and stuff to just kind of throw it up there. Um, so I was able to add that at least, you know, even if I couldn't get, like, all the people in the windowsills and stuff. But, um, uh, I mean, again, there's not much to say about, like, this area, like, other than, like... It's supposed to be, yep, just like people in windows and you just kind of walk through and you're like, yep, this is something. Like, I don't even know if you're supposed to say it's nice looking because like, well, the ship, the it's ship part is Italian. cool. Yeah, the ship part is cool. But like, you know, this part is just kind of lame. It's like, all right, you know, I mean. Yeah, it's the, not like anything cooler could be here. But yeah. Yeah, like, because... Like, I was thinking about that myself, like, you know, like, what could they even have put here, you know, uh, like, that would be, like, you know, something that would fit the, like, kind of Asia theme and stuff, but, like, you know, justify, you know, because they do have plenty of space, um, yeah. right next to the, uh, crane exhibit, which, oh, which, by the way, they added a new crane, so there's a second crane now, um, uh, Red Crown Crane, um, they added a, uh, there's like an area that's just completely like, you know, const or, uh, I don't know what you call it, like excavated. Uh, that's like, they took down all the trees and stuff. So there's like an empty area where there could be an exhibit, but there just isn't. Um, so I don't know what their plan with that is. Uh, I assume it's probably just like another maintenance shed or something along those lines, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Uh, I know we're supposed to be getting a new gibbon enclosure over where the, uh, you know, where that otter enclosure, or like the temporary otter enclosure that they've now removed entirely, uh, that will be a gibbon enclosure. And the porcupine exhibit uh, now has snowy owls in it, uh, which are not doing well. <laughs> oh, that's not good. Um, well, it's just, it's really hot. So like, oh yeah, they're always like you know like hyperventilating, and they, they try to get a breeding pair, and like that's just the issue. Is I don't know if you know anything about owls. Is they uh, the females will just sit on the eggs regardless, and so like even though it's like hyperventilating, it needs to stay on the eggs no matter what. <laughs> oh, oh that. Yeah, it's, it's so it's well, it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of upsetting to watch because you just go there and you just see them like <laughs> like they're like panting like dogs or something. But it's an I owl. I don't think I've ever seen a snowy owl exhibited outside. Uh, yeah, I mean, it'll come to Roger Williams. They're next to the, they're in the porcupine habitat next to the eagles, eagles <laughs> slash uh, snake house or whatever. Um, which yeah, I, I was debating like if I want to change the map to like you know reflect that when you know, and it's the same thing like. I, I sometimes wonder that, like, at what point do I, like, reflect the accurate, like, you know, modern zoo versus, like, at the time I was building the enclosures and stuff. Um, so, for instance, do I put a camel in, in this exhibit or do I leave it empty? Like, I, I don't know. Um, which, that's the other thing. Like, uh, I, 
because since we might be a few years off from like the Tigers going in, yeah. What do you th- like? I don't know. Do you have any theories on like what they could put there, like for now, like? Um, I mean, I think it all the it again, like I said, it all really depends on if how this pandemic goes and if we can get new animals. If we can, I do see them. They might add a new ungulate. Maybe they'll get more camels. Maybe they'll get a different Asian ungulate. Like they could try to get some Sika deer. They could try to get Axis deer. They could get black buck. There's there's a few animals that could fit in there because it's definitely a, a decent sized enclosure. So they can get like a, a smaller herd of like deer or something. But then again, that might turn into a pronghorn situation and they'll end up being what was supposed to be a temporary exhibit, but end up being yeah, becoming like permanent. Years. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, that's kind of what I'm curious about myself, um, just because I, I, I think that because we're coming up on the end. Um, I do think that they might try to speed up the tiger process just because Faces of the Rainforest, even though they want to say it was a success, has been an absolute disaster because of coronavirus. They were really banking on the fact that, oh, come to the big interior tropical America building where we have baby sloths and monkeys and stuff. And just because of the situation, like just, you know, no one can get in. And we got a Chinese al- or a, an American alligator that's an albino. Can't go in that interior building either. So like, all of our interior stuff right now has been useless. So I think they might try to speed up some of these like outside exhibits. You know that might bring in attendance. Um, and I think it's just it makes sense to have tigers first before like the sea lions or anything. But um, that, they will bring in people. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the logic I'm going with. Uh, just before we end this video, I'm just quickly, uh, tidying up the, uh, Snow Leopard exhibit, and, uh, yeah, so, uh, that's the exhibit. Um, uh, here's some footage of my old, uh, dromedary camel mod, um, you know, in remembrance of Sasha, uh, and Gina, for that matter, both of our dromedary camels. They both lived, uh, well into their 20s, though they probably could have lived longer. Um... So thanks for watching. Um, next episode, uh, we will be doing the Gibbon exhibit. And for Mystic Aquarium fans, I am I am aware that series uh, has gone on a hiatus. It will come. It will come back. Uh, it, it's just been a bit just because I have to make the, you know, sea lion mods and stuff. But uh, thanks for watching. And uh, bye, guys. Bye, guys.